All righty. Okay, we're muted and live. Good evening, everybody. I uh, hope you're hanging in in these unusual times, times which thankfully in some ways are looking a little bit more hopeful than they were, say, a month ago. A um, couple of things. Um, some of you may have noticed that uh, Larissa Schmeiler hasn't been joining us as co-host for quite a while. Um, the fact is, uh, Larissa, Larissa is overworked and underpaid um, and has many, many obligations. So she's, uh, she's basically on hiatus for the moment. Uh, in her stead, uh, the wonderful uh, poet uh, Cassandra Atherton from Australia um, will be joining us as co-host. Uh, Cassandra is a prose poet, a critic, and a scholar. Um, she um, was a visiting scholar in English at Harvard University, uh, from, uh, sponsored uh, by Professor Stephen Greenblatt. Um, she was a visiting fellow in the Institute of Comparative Culture at Sofia University in Tokyo. Um, and she has published over 20 critical and creative books um, and is the longest standing editor of Westerly magazine and series editor of Spineless Wonders anthologies. Her prose poetry has been published uh, internationally um, from the UK to Australia to the United States. Um, and we're delighted for her to be joining us as co-host uh, in in lip balm forthcoming. Um, so uh, we'll also expect uh, there's going to be a New Zealand feature fairly shortly uh, in the early next year. Uh, we're going to do, our, um, we have a, an idea of, bring, of doing features whereby we have two, uh, let's say, British poets or Australian poets and two American poets uh, at the same time. So uh, there'll be a kind of different international aesthetic going on. Uh, until now, we've mostly focused on the United States, but uh, um, we've dabbled, but uh, now we'd like to expand the, those horizons. Um, of course, uh, Cassandra will be joining us in the morning where she's normally eating uh, Fruit Loops or Cheerios. Um, and the rest of us are thankfully sipping a martini or having a glass of wine. Um, so let's kick off the show by having uh, my co-host Jonathan Penton uh, read a poem for us. Um, Jonathan founded Unlikely Stories, an electronic literature of art in 1998, and since then he's lent his editorial and management assistance to a number of literary and artistic ventures such as Mad Hat Inc., the New Orleans Poetry Festival, Rigorous and Big Bridge. In 2005 he founded Unlikely Books, which publishes three to five poetry books a year. He's organized literary performances and performed himself Across the United States, his poetry books are Last Chap from Virgin Press in 2004, Blood and Salsa and Painting Rust and Prosthetic Gods, uh, Standards of Sidity, which came out from Litfest Press in 2016, and more recently, the free eChat book Backstories, which you can download from Jeffrey Sides Archivist eBooks. E uh, I'd love to hear a poem from you, Jonathan. Thank you, Mark. So like I do most weeks, I'm going to read a poem that we published at Unlikely Stories. Uh, specifically, I'm going to read from one of our unlikely books, um, Political AF, A Rage Collection by Tara Campbell. Uh, some of you know Tara. She uh, helped us co-host the Zoomathon when we raised money for the Democratic Party. And yeah, she's an unlikely author. Her book's called Political AF, and this is a piece from it, American Beast. It enters on soft pause and nuzzles your cheek and tells you it's okay. It says it's not your fault your father lost his job or is working three or isn't there at all. It prowls your house and tickles your chin with its whiskers and says it's not your mother's fault. She's too tired to play with you. Mommy has to sit, it purrs, and rub her feet because her shifts are long or her hours have been cut or she hasn't had a raise in years. It's because other people are willing, it says, to come and work for less. It pads into your room at night. It's hungry, but it assures you it's not your fault the factory closed and the jobs left the state, left the country. 
Is it true, you ask, that the jobs went all over the world? It nods, and when you ask who sent them away and why, it says, go to sleep. We won't feel hungry when we're asleep. It climbs into your bed and curls up next to you and tells you it's not your fault. The walls at your school are cracked and the paint is peeling and the water tastes funny and your friend found mold on a sloppy Joe bun. When you ask why they don't fix the school and the water and the bread, it noses your shoulder and says, but you had fun at recess, didn't you? On the monkey bars? It licks its chops. But did you see, it asks, those other kids getting free lunch. It comes around often now, rumbling in the voices of grown-ups, speaking softly after dinner about the problems of the world. It licks your hand and purrs on your chest and tells you not to be scared of all the angry men with guns who look like you, because the angry men with guns who don't look like you are much more dangerous. It's always hungry now. It grunts and prowls, teeth glinting in the dark. But you're not afraid because it's someone else's fault. And when you get older, you'll stop them. You'll pounce on everyone who took away your country and drag them all back to feed the beast. And it won't even be your fault when it chokes to death on everything America lost. Okay, that was by Tara Campbell. And now we'd like to hear a poem from Mark. Mark Vincennes, co-host. Is an Anglo-Swiss poet, a fiction writer, translator, editor, publisher, designer, multi-genre artist, and musician. He has published 14 books of poetry, including more recently, Becoming the Sound of Bees, Leaning into the Infinite, The Syndicate of Water and Light, and Here Comes the Night Dust. Mark's newest collection, The Little Book of Earthly Desires, and a novella set in ancient China, Three Daos of Dao, or How to Catch a Fortuitous Elephant, are both forthcoming in 2021 from Spite and Dival. An album of music, ambience, and verse, Left Hand Clapping, is also forthcoming from Tree Torn Records. Mark is also a prolific translator and has translated from the German, Romanian, and French. He has published 10 books of translations, most recently Unexpected Development by Swiss poet and novelist Klaus Mers, which was a finalist for the 2016 Cliff Becker Book Prize in Translation. Mark's poems have been published in many journals, including The Nation, Plowshares, The Los Angeles Review, Raritan, and Plume. His work has received fellowships and grants from the Swiss Alps Council, the National Endowment for the Arts, and the Winterbender Foundation for Poetry. He's the editor and publisher of Mad Hat Press and publisher of New American Writing. He's lived all over the world, from Brazil to China to Iceland to India. He was born in Matilda Hospital in Hong Kong, but now lives in a farm in rural Western Massachusetts, where there are more coyotes and bears than people. Mark, what are you reading for us today? Thanks, Jonathan. Um, I'm gonna read a poem a uh, recent poem that is in a collection I've been working on. Uh, this poem's called The Last Descendant. In the not too distant future, in some distant sun system, the engines of economy will go silent. On Sundays, the consortium will meet to discuss soft matters, wafer thin trinkets of colored glass, the red moon on the horizon the gentle moss-covered hills with their panoply of glimmering beetles. They will celebrate the union at the source, the wind and the water dust, the hanging foxes in the caverns of Pantum, or the light-giving lodgings awake in song and reverie. You won't understand until you start hearing it, that heartbeat of night blossoms and their tending creatures who recite ancient poetry behind the old people's home. Among the hundred eyes at dinner time, behold the paprika sprinkled on the cinnamon river. Watch the bluebirds rise, strumming the grasslands with their plumes. It has been said that all is done for. The word no longer ho holds any power. For a while, some places glow in harmony, others falter, fashion fairy tales to suit the breeze. Still others, with their torches and magnets, will blemish the way. And just who is this obstinate group who simply hand over their skins? So that one is called The Last Descendant. And now I'm delighted to present our feature, uh, which includes the wonderful poets Johannes Jørgensen, Timothy Liu, Anthony Madrid, and Dara Wiem. Um, and we'll begin with Johannes, uh, who is the author of eight books, 
including most recently Poetry Against All and Transgressive Circulation, Essays on Translation. And he is the translator of several more, including works by Asseberg, Anne Jedelund, and Helena Bobberg. He teaches at the University of Notre Dame's creative writing program and is one of the editors of Action Books. Welcome, Johannes. Hi. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, thanks to Mark and everybody for helping set this up. Um, I'm going to read from an, something I've been working on for the past few years. It's a long poem called Summer. I started writing it in 2016 when I was in Sweden. It was an exceptionally beautiful summer, but of course I kept hearing the news from back in the US, um, you know, fascist rallies and such. <clears throat> And I wanted to kind of keep it out, but I realized, then I started thinking about what it means to keep things out and why we have the needs for certain kinds of purity. And I started thinking about, or I thought about this poem by a Swedish poet, Matt Söderlund, that begins the stone pöbel på min trap. There's a rabble on my doorstep. Um, so that's where the poem starts. Um, there, I was, in, so I was in Sweden and certain Swedish words kind of come in and Swedish pop songs, because I listen to music when I write, kind of come up and glitch up the, the, the rhythm a little bit. You don't actually have to know any of the Swedish. I don't think you have to know it. <clears throat> but I'll tell you some few things, like Sureno means lilacs, which stay in bloom in Sweden, like late into summer. Pöben is the rabble. Soma is summer. Detra is daughters. And then there's a bunch of words that begin with O, which is the prefix un in Swedish. So you have uyud, unsound, which is noise, obviously. Uyur, an animal, clearly a beast. But also more importantly, uskuld, undet, which is virgin. So I play around with that kind of purity and depth and money and what have you. Um, there's also references, a lot of references to hovet, ocean, which is the ocean, but also I was listening to Frank Ocean. There's references to Eva Kristina Ulsson, who is an oracular Swedish poet, sort of my hero. Um, okay, so I'll just read a few. It's a long poem, but I'll read a few from throughout. I can't hear you. The lilacs are in bloom and the underworld is slow. I'm slowly listening to girls singing about the rabble in Surenona. They're at my door. The rabble, Pöben, the girls are in the lilacs, Surenona. I can't hear them. I have a telephone number tattooed on my shoulder and the lyrics of the song on the radio seems to be, they're at the door, Pöben. They're at the door, Drömmen. It's not a dream. Summer never ends. The currency has lost the language, inside language, Treacherous lilac language, Surena, made for girls like me. For me, the lilacs bloom like little fingerprints, hundreds of bloody little fingerprints. I can't hear you. I'm listening to the radio. My wife is feeding me pomegranate seeds. She's feeding me with bloody fingers. It's summer. It's summer. I can't hear you. They're soma. How can you think I'm listening to the rabble? I'm marrying the venom from my lips to the summer outside my window with its treason language. Sorry, we're using the screen. Happened? Sorry. It's trees and language of lilacs and how that language dreams about me how I must be finished with flowers. No, I'm finished with the treatment you see in the photograph of the mutilated fox. The caption reads bondum as I thread amber on a string, the treatment string. I haven't cut it yet. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut every string of every 
necklace because I have to go further, go further into the Rutna Sommaren. If I'm going to end Skulden, I want to be Uskulden, but poems are never summer. They want to be written about the cold crackling in my spine as I search for the insectine language I speak when I'm not ever writing again. How strange to wake up in this language and be finished with home, be finished with flowers. Och ett vackert halsband is around min hals. Bona babla, like they are alive. June is naked, like it hals band a neck, less a less ness has been photographed with seeds coming out on my wife's throat. They are mine, Halsen, and the seeds, which are from an underground flower. I am from the children, not the other way around. They have taught me how to poison my mouth not the other way around. They have taught me I am from the land the same way poetry is from throats. How disgusting to be beautiful, says the tree to me about Surenana, Dötrana in the painting of a swan in the drone, song, drone, song, in the shooting, in the fur around my pretty neck. There are lies, somalus, idrönet, from the rabble. The tree cannot understand the debt I'm in. I'm in a fox fur at the shooting range. There's a drone that drowns out and lies crawl in the fur i'm humming the rabble's song it sounds like hovet i'm drowning in hovet it sounds like children are shooting each other in summer it sounds like i am their mother of pearl father their suicide father it's the same thing i am a virgin in noise uskuld i uyud unsound it's hard to be an unanimal when the radio tells me i'm disgusting when i try to write this song when i try to remain a virgin an uskuld utan skuld summer is my debt no poetry is i can't pay for it with mother of pearls i can't pay for it i'm the one reading eva kristina ulsons antigone with Shostas Blumer i Kungsträdgården. We have shadows in summer. I can read letters. I won't tell you what they say. It's private message from my private mother to my private daughter. The daughter goes clap, clap. Med hennes nektergalna händer. I invented war, I can't turn it off. When I read the lilac message from my mother of pearl father to my daughters of pearl, Dötrana are in the painting, they invented the painting. I invented Dötrana, you didn't invent us, you cannot even afford to live in your own poem. When you wake up gravity sick with images of children by the border, Herben, you wake up with a toxic virginity. Yes, I wake up with treasonous lilacs. I want summer to go on forever. I can't pay for it. There are two girls in the painting that failed to become a masterpiece. I don't own it. I don't own a gun. I don't even own this poem, Summer Does.
I'm not yet in the clear, but I want to return to riots before I am crossed out. I am crossed out. I can see it. Isomayes it on a white screen. I am crossed out. Ida vita. I am a virgin. Ida vita. Svaya ya mehela troppen and take photographs of Uplop while I stand near smutsad by the smashed window. Uyuden. They show me something about desire. They want me to be uskuld, but there is too much debt, too much skuld, I mean uskuld, too much uyud from the riots. I conclude that I hate poetry skulden, i uskulden. I'm in Stockholm like I'm wasted on summer. I'm wasted in summer, wasted in Stockholm and wasted on this sunlit room where I am sitting by a window and Magnus Carlson is fifth with eternal love. Okay, I will read one more here. Um, the larval aura makes summer sense to me who's alone with my aftermath and the teeth have been torn out of the mask that represents mimicry. Nobody wants to tell me with summer breaths where it hurts or who was injured when I broke into a toxic garble with a hissing snake for a heart. When I was sweaty and tired, I learned to kiss in the underworld <coughs> with my mother tongue and my hymns to inflation already sung <coughs> in a dazzling killer language. I learned to speak, <coughs> sorry, in the most, thank you. <coughs> Looks like he's having connection problems. You, you okay, Johannes? Shall we continue? Yeah. All right. So um, it'd be interesting to, to listen to that back anyway mm -hmm. when, when, we, when we put it on YouTube. And next up, we have Timothy Liu, whose latest book is Let It Ride. His journals and papers are archived at the Berg Collection at the New York Public Library. A reader of occult es esoterica, he lives in Woodstock, New York. And I, th I believe sometimes in Manhattan, right? Um, so welcome, Tim, and we're delighted to hear from you today. It's great to be here. Thank you, Mark and Jonathan, for making this space uh, for all of us who are tuning in or who will tune into the recording. Um, I, I am a fanboy of Anthony Madrid, who I have never met in person. So it's nice to see your face. Um, I was telling a friend about this reading yesterday. And when I got off the uh, call, I, I sent my friend a copy of uh, I Am Your Slave. And so um, <laughs> when I look at your face, I think of how this. All right. Um, I am going to be reading off my screen. Uh, so if there is a screen share and I can't see what I'm reading, that is what's happening. Okay. All time low. Due to the price of crude having fallen below detectable levels, we are unable to provide continuing contact tracing. For those who attended last weekend's bareback coronavirus party and ask for your cooperation in helping us track down those who fled across the border. Bored as fuck. His antics were gaining traction 
parading his dick around the locker room while snapping his towel at those who bothered to look his way. Am I the only one who remembers this? Decades after the fact, the way he left his mark on me as if I were a toy dog, the neighborhood bully took pleasure in pissing on, only to get away with it? Who am I, if not the non-native speaker who's paid to clean up after him? All of my days linked together, like a crew of orange jumpsuits picking up trash tossed by those who can't afford vacation homes and panic rooms to retreat into when the pandemic struts its what tidy whitey ass across our nation's face. COVID owed. The folks in masks in Chinatown in early February looked paranoid. Don't they know the CDC said to save the masks for essential workers? Stop hoarding N95s. In hindsight, they were onto something and it was only mid-May. No new infections reported in Hong Kong for weeks. Their bars and schools all open for business again. Now I can't leave home without one. Can't hook up in the woods behind my house without one on. It's safe and fun to watch someone jerk off more than six feet away. He bent down to get a closer look at my cock, tempted to rip both our masks off. He said, no harm done. Worked himself up into a frenzy, but couldn't quite come. I wasn't disappointed at first process over product, even if things had a way for going on too long. I never got to see what his mouth looked like in the year of the rat, metal rat to be exact. Tell me if you can name five elements belonging to the lunar calendar's 60 year cycle. I'm a wood snake. Nice to meet you. And you're either a water dog or a fire horse. Let's get some curbside pickup takeout before this offer expires. Make no mistake. You didn't wear a mask to the Hasid funeral during Mardi Gras. You didn't plan ahead and bring enough PPE to the BBQ in the Lone Star State, where abortions are no longer available, except through drive-through or curbside pickup. Eye for an eye. This year, we decided to file our taxes separately, not knowing one of us would qualify for the stimulus package, spending our coronavirus kickback on beefcake physique magazines from the 50s at a local auction held online, thrown back to a time before porn became porn those black and white speedo clad gents and boys flexing their sexiest poses with genitals on occasion penciled in by a previous owner now presumably 
dead. This auction, the result of an estate sale slinging buttloads of Victorian export China footed bowls and soapstone statues we don't have room to put on display, no. Not when we prefer by far to spend our $1,200 on something that's been kept out of you for most of our lives. Uh, this is for all of you who have had a book come out in the pandemic and have been terribly disappointed. This is Flaccid COVID Ode. Threw a book party, but no one came. And this is for all you closet mycologists foraging mushrooms in the pandemic. To misidentify could mean severe gastric distress or death. I watched the video on how to distinguish the difference between chanterelles appearing one by one under red oaks dripping with summer rain and those which feed in clusters on dead wood they have managed to anchor into. False chanterelles do not smell like apricots when held to our noses. The gills on their undersides more friable than the ridges on their counterparts that otherwise look the same. Better be willing to get up close. No one on this mountain behind our houses needs to wear a mask. Each of us already far enough from one another to head out at dawn with baskets and sharp blades, eager to see what the day's harvest might hold. And I'll end with this poem uh, for the season. Uh, grateful that we're all still alive. Last Christmas. Your best friend had brain cancer and would have married you, but she knew that she couldn't turn you straight. The best of us have tried, she laughed. This was during the holiday season we had been driving around in your brand new Jetta, the one the insurance company replaced after someone rear-ended you in front of the county fair. A teen who said he was going 15 max when it was more like 45, you said, late on your payments in the pre-pandemic, your gap insurance expiring a mistake anyone could make. Somehow the money came through. Timing is everything. And this was the car we were cruising around in, snaking through subdivisions and sprawl on the outskirts of Rhinebeck, looking for icicle lights hung up in the eaves and neon blue menorahs burning on the sills. Not too many decorations out this time of year, Susan said, and she was right. Religious fervor at an all time low, if we were to judge by the kilowatts per hour this community had been consuming. We were driving around with Susan instead of making love is what I thought, riding alone in the back seat. I wasn't the one who was dying, was I? Two hours is a long time to be driving around after sundown, unless you knew this might be the last time we would be together.
and it was. So many women want to marry him, Susan tells me, says she woke up from a dream last night where doctors told her that her cancer was a joke. Susan laughs, please someone tell us this is all a joke. One house has really overdone it this year. Santa and his sleigh drawn by a dozen reindeer all lit up, life size. Should we get out or keep driving? How can we manage to steal that baby from its manger without leaving tracks in the snow? Our moment for hijinks, shenanigans. For all we know, this might only be a dream blaring on the radio. Jose James, Diane Reeves, surely we've heard them all before back in Susan's room where we divided the spoils. Vodka ice cubes melting in her sippy cup, turquoise blue American spirit stashed in a box of Depends. I was watching you stringing up Christmas lights on the wall behind Susan's hospital bed. I was admiring the few ornaments glinting on a tabletop tree, an enormous tenderness in something so small. That was the last time I saw Susan. Back at the car outside, you held the front door open for me my turn to get in. I turned and thanked you for including me, said, this is not how I imagined we would be spending the evening. Something in you broke, misheard, I don't know, something. And you said, you were the one who invited yourself to tag along. I never asked for this can't stand to have any more disappointment in my life. You drove off in a huff, trail of exhaust glowing red on the darkest night of the year. I stood there, stranded with my back to a nursing home hemmed in by rolling hills, moonlight on the snow so bright, so clear. Thank you, Tim. Beautiful. Nice to end with the clarity. And next we have Anthony Madrid, who lives in Victoria, Texas. And his poems have, been, have, have appeared in Best American Poetry, Boston Review, Fence, Harvard Review, Lana Turner, Lit and Poetry. He is the author of I, I, I Am Your Slave Now, Do What I Say, from Canarium 2012 and Try Never from Canarium 2017. He also did a children's book for adults called There Was an Old Man with a Springbok, which came out with Prelude Books in 2019. Check him out at, at, at www.anthonymadridoneword.net. Thanks for joining us, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh... I'm going to read exactly three pieces. Um, the first one sort of uh, wants a footnote because um, many people do not know what a tungsten bucking bar is. It's a, a it's the title of the poem and. Um, that phrase is repeated over and over again in the poem. So it's kind of convenient to know what tungsten bucking bar is. Here's one right here. This is, uh, you use it for riveting. It's a very, very heavy piece of metal that you put behind your rivet. And then the, the rivets back here and the rivet gun bashes the rivet into shape against the tungsten bucking bar. So the first poem is called tungsten bucking bar. And it's written in um, a form that was a big hit in medieval Wales. And it's a form that uh, I fell in love with on first contact a million years ago. 
and have written many poems in this form. This is uh, Tungsten Bugging Bar. Thank you, and situate. <clears throat> Here's hoping that the uh, video holds out, I mean the uh, audio. <laughs> Tungsten bucking bar, riveting tail, Swiss army knife glyph and a billy goat's eye. The list of whatever's forbidden the wise is to my people a menu. Tungsten bucking bar, change of venue, chamber enough for a swallow's nest. They resected three inches of bone from my wrist like kicking away a kickstand. Tungsten, bucking bar, drop it in quicksand, clock for the windup and caulk for the pitch. Third time this week, I have written a witch. Kid, it must be witch week. Tungsten, bucking bar, Battle Creek, Michigan. Candles in Lubbock and cake in Des Moines. I win the award and I helplessly join the ranks of the overrated. Tungsten bucking bar totally naked. The human race is a pile of sludge. Tallies well enough, undergraduate judge. Take care not to all or nothing it. Tungsten bucking bar vitamin supplement. Improved to within an inch of my life. The bumblebee knows how to lick the knife. The rose how to wreck the bed. Tungsten bucking bar, I looked overhead. The sun was so bright I could see through the geese. Molybdenum, nickel, and manganese, reversing repugnant and predicate. Tungsten bucking bar, corporal punishment, carpal weevils at work in their tunnels. The hard hats are all coming back with their bundles of fibers pulled off an orange. Tungsten bucking bar, don't be discouraged. Just Corinth and Thebes and reasons for moving. We have to stop telling ourselves we're improving the people we punish. That's the first one. Second one is same form. Um, this one's called Bag of Black Beans. And it was sort of intended as a kind of uh, like the satellite to the first poem. Uh, and it would it might be helpful for this one. There's a little footnote for this one too. Um, Gandhi's word for nonviolence uh, in Gujarati, which was his first language, was ahimsa. I don't know if people know the word ahimsa. Okay, that's that was that was Gandhi's word for nonviolence, and it does come up a couple of times in the poem. And so I'm telling you ahead of time. Everything else should go pretty all right. Bag of black beans. Bag of black beans, so try something new. Set sail in a shoe, make a hole in the waves. If I ever contribute to the world being saved, it won't be for love of the people. Bag of black beans, so run it by legal. Sealing a hole in the wall with a cork, an artist's love is love for the work as it will be when it's finished. Bag of black beans, Norwegian and Finnish, adventurous curls and pitiful noise. This ahimsa of mine is the same as Tolstoy's, except he did it for God. Bag of black beans, aluminum rod, South American sun with wriggling rays. My ahimsa is exactly like MLK's, except he did it for God. Bag of black beans, malfeasance and fraud. I'm not into anger, I've taken a vow. I get very angry, I'm angry right now, but that's different from being into it. Bracken and beans, Danish and Inuit, the people in charge are following orders. I mostly fail to give their supporters the benefit of the doubt. Bag of black beans, porter and stout, Le Moyen-Age, Enfant Malherbe, I'm committing myself to sharing the world with people I cannot love. Bag of black beans, white wing dove. When push comes to shove, when shove comes to shove it, I'll tell you right now, you're not gonna love it. You're still gonna have to share. Bag of black beans, like water, like air, filigree mesh of the trash receptacle. Woe to the wonderful curdling spectacle of telling people off. 
bag of black beans, gonna need you to cough. The drooping vines will stand at attention. Recrimination, recondescension, this century's soup de jour. Bag of black beans, we'll know for sure, because each bean comes with a tiny white dot. And as for the pricks, I'm done with that lot. I've kicked all my toenails black. And now for the last one. This last one is a um, special um, piece because it was written as a birthday poem for my life partner, Beloved, who is with us um, this evening. She's one of these little squares on your screen. Um, and uh, this is for her birthday, which happened on 5 November. It is, um, it's also uh, imitating an old form. Those other ones were imitating medieval Welsh. This is imitating super ancient Chinese. The, it's, uh, it's written imitating the style of the poetry in the Shi Jing, the, the oldest anthology of uh, Chinese poetry one of the Confucian classics, in fact. Okay, so um, this piece, uh, and this is full of true details straight out of my life here in Cricket's Ear Hole, Texas, where I live. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, this doesn't have a title. <laughs> On the four mile walk is a scorpion, the size of eyebrow tweezers. His whole life he goes around half cocked and playing the world like a piano. Not that he can play the piano, but his scampering is like that. On the four mile walk is a deer herd, sometimes surprisingly casual. Their whole lives they go around hair triggered, yet calmly look for their contacts. Not that they look for their contacts, but their eating is like that. On the four mile walk is a baby possum, perhaps abandoned by mama. He has the littlest gleamers and less than a half hour to live. Not that we know what will happen, but the owls around here are like that. On the four mile walk is a girlfriend. She brings with her her helpful friend. They have many worries, must plan their classes, yet feed each other fresh baked bread. Not that they feed each other bread, but they're comforting each other is like that. That's it. Thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and mute myself. Thank you, that was fantastic. Thank you so much. All right, next up is Dara Ware and I don't have her bio on me. So um, Mark, are you still? Ah, there we go. I'm right here. Haven't disappeared at all. Um, next up, we have Daryl Weir, whose books include The Forthcoming Tolstoy Killed Anna Karenina in the Still of the Night, and You Good Thing, Remnants of Hannah, Reverse Rapture, Hat on a Pond, and Voyages in English. Her award awards include uh, uh, from the Lannan Foundation, American Poetry Review, the Poetry Center Book Award, a Guggenheim Foundation, National Endowment for the Arts, and Massachusetts Cultural Council. Her poems are included in Pushcart Prize and Best American Poetry anthologies. A limited edition, X in Fix 2003, is number 10 in Rain Taxi's Brainstorm series. With James Tate, she rescued the lost epic of Arthur Davidson Fick the author's annotations, commentary, and notes of reference for a millennium's teardrop. Um, her poems can be found in Grant of the Nation, American Poetry Review, Conduit Vault, Denver Quarterly, Gulf Coast, and many more. She's been poet in residence at University of Montana, University of Texas, Austin, Emory University, and the University of Utah. She is a member of the poetry faculty of the MFA program for poets and writers at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, where she co-founded the Juniper Initiative for Literary Arts and Action at the University of Massachusetts, the Juniper Summer Writing Institute and Workshops, and she is currently serving as publisher and editor of the poetry 
and found prose and images journal, Jubilat. Welcome, Dara. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. It's, uh, it's great to be here. I'm, uh, I'm a fan of Zoom. So um, this first poem is called 1000 Sam Elliott's 100 Agnes Vargas. It had long been our habit on lazy afternoons to walk down the old long plain dusty dirt road right up to its edge at the end of the world. That day, we'd been talking about a hundred drawings of Agnes Vargas and a thousand drawings of Sam Elliott. Storm clouds built make-believe cityscapes and killdeer herded their innocent chicks. Cicadas buzzed and crickets scraped. It was typical of us to linger at the edge of the end of the world. And so we did enjoying the view and Eliot's and Varda's beauty. Everything about us had been determined by whatever we'd been given or stumbled upon on our way to the end of the world. But on this day, we could see a cloudburst coming. And so we walked away from the end's edge faster than usual so fast, we could see another road inside the one we walked on every day. As we reached our roads one sharp turn, there by the side of the road, we saw a wooden block, a tablet with signs carved into it. And we understood the tablet held a message. We were meant to take home with us, which we did. I was thinking of Matthias Lavina's drawings of Sam Elliott and of Emily Pettit's drawings of Agnes Varda made for her brother Guy Pettit and of his Catalpa Press edition of Jean-Enfant Brian Savarin's The Physiology of Taste originally published in 1825. In some circumstances considered a seminal work of writing about food, in particular, Catalpa's page 49 meditation 10 the end of the world. Tolstoy killed Anna Karenina. A certain someone knows something else certain people keep to themselves. Certain enough to say out loud, it's all mine. It's not yours. Maybe it's no one's, like a wallet says, I have money that's not yours. Or a house says, I have a place to sleep at night. Or a coat says, there's a body to keep warm. There's a certain time of a certain plant, a certain someone, a certain secret, a certain drug certain horrible ways to end. Say a certain something takes place out of sight. It's important for you to picture it. In all, it's certain something. Unstoppable water, avaricious fire, someone throwing themselves under the wheels of a train. And what next? If I say I know a certain place, I claim a higher ground because you don't know where and I wonder why, if not to say I have something you wish you had. A certain way I have to cause you to want something there's no way of knowing what having it will do with you. After reading Joanne Kiger's journal and then reading her poem, The Crystal in Tamapai and being reminded of a poem by Marnie Prang, I want what you have. The baby, 9-11, 2020. I gave birth to an unwanted baby 
though not by my body. The baby attached to nothing, no umbilical cord. I know this, I looked for it. It was nowhere to be found. The baby's one good eye looked past everything. Whether into eternity or not, I can't say. While its other eye stayed still, sewn, closed. This worried me because I knew from this, others would choose to shun the baby. It's automatic how we turn away from what we fear. It can't be helped. Everyone made it clear it would be better for everyone were the baby to disappear. The baby could see this. The baby didn't mind. Cycles of fires burned and destroyed the west coast of the United States September to December as usual. And not as usual, a virus had killed by September over 200,000 and harmed nearly 10 million more. And an all too usual politics of hatred simmered everywhere. Today's my brother Peter's birthday. Brother, sister are the most beloved words related to words used to diagram families. Uh, this is called During the Time You Are Deceased. During the time you are deceased, your ability to communicate with the living will be inhibited. You will be unable to explain yourself with the same emotional urgency you once did. You will only be detectable to animals you once spent time with on a daily basis. Your attitude toward others who have not ceased to live will undergo abrupt correction. Those for whom you previously held suspicion will resolve some way or another. Any skepticism you once held will palpably lessen. Your overall assessment will soften. Your understanding of weakness will multiply. You may recognize the dawning of regrets you will wish you had admitted previously. Until you begin living again, you will have improved in all ways save one. No one will be afraid of you. No one will stroke your hair or hold your gaze. Nobody will. Um, thank you all for listening. I've really enjoyed listening to everybody else. Here's the last poem I'm gonna read. It's called Capitalism. It makes me feel about as low as ASAP makes me feel. There's so many kinds of us coming in various versions. There is, for instance, one whose bold sense of entitlement is bolstered in an unquestioned innate sense of righteousness. This makes for heady combinations. Therefore, this mode calls for constant comparison, something sometimes useful, other times blindingly obliterating to beauty, grace, love, empathy, sympathy, insight, courage, insight, courage, humor, love, grace, humor, love, wit, foresight, generosity, love, humor, truth, empathy, grace, sympathy, empathy, sincerity, grace, truth, beauty, wit, courage, adventuresomeness, surprise, love, humor, empathy, kindness, withholding judgment, love, humor, empathy, recklessness, generosity, love, humor, despair, understanding, love, humor, empathy, Recklessness, love, humor, despair, loving kindness, love, humor, empathy, humor, joy, sympathy, love, kindness, courage.
Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. That was amazing. And so we have concluded our feature for today. Um, and I'd like to thank so much uh, Johannes Jorensen, uh, Tim, Liu, Anthony Madrid, and Dara for that amazing reading that you just gave. Thank you so much for joining us. And next up, we, we move to our open mic feature, um, which tonight will be run by my co-host, Jonathan. Um, Jonathan, I'll hand it over to you. Um, but just one, one quick thing before we commence. Uh, next week, we have Anne Elizabeth Pluto, Pu Ying Wong, Tim Schulmont, and Gloria Minduk, all Bostonians, with guest MC Karina Van Berkham, uh, one of the editors of Spoke Journal. And then on December 19, we have Stephen Dunn, Moira Simon, Susanna H. Case, and Margot Taft Steva with guest MC Indran Amathiagan. Um, so don't miss those episodes. Thanks so much for joining us today. And over to the open mic. To you, Jonathan. Thanks, Mark. So we had two people sign up last week uh, who don't appear to be here. Um, Don Krieger or Indran, if you're here under a different name, please hit me up in the chat. Um, otherwise, we will go ahead with Bob Heeman. All right, let me unmute you. Oh, let's request in the chat to read. All right, let me read these. Hi, folks. Hello, Bob. Information. The bears belong to all of us. Sometimes we change them into ostriches for our amusement. At other times, we give them cars so they can drive through the forest and scare the frogs. The secret, of course, is that the bears are really afraid of the frogs. They know that a single frog kiss can change them forever into men like us, men restless and bored and searching always for any distraction they can claim from the animals that always surround them. Thank Wonderful, you. as always, thank you. Thanks. Thank you for being here. All right, next up, we're gonna hear from Lydia Cortez. Let me unmute Lydia. Good to see you again, Lydia. Lydia, are you there? Oh. Okay, thank you. The readers were amazing today. I enjoyed each and every one of them. Thank you so much. Okay. Recently, I was uh, in a group, I'm still in a group, which is reading the book, It. And um, it's a book that came out in the 60s by a Danish woman writer whose name I forget right now. So I'm sorry for that, but I'm sure many of you know which book I'm talking about. Uh, so this came out of this, My It. This is so funny, this is so tragic, this is so this, this is so it, this is it, this is so, 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 this is so, so, so. And I'm just gonna interrupt myself to say so, so is without taste in Spanish. This is so, so, so. This is so missing, so something, this is so, 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 so. Needs, needs something, so. Soso means missing taste, tastes like nothing, nothing, tastes like no thing, so, soso. Mija means daughter, put some sal in some sal. Not sal like some Italian, but sal with a T and you get it. It salt, some salt, not any old sal like Salvatore Mino or Salvatore means my savior, in Spanish, Salvador. Salt goes gold, not Salvatore. Sal goes tower, except sal in Italian is sale, not sale in English, Blackish Friday. Sal, a command in Spanish, go get out in Spanish. Salt in Italian not go rogue. Oh, this is so something. This is now algo, something. Not I'll go, but I shall go with algo. 
with something. Something is not nothing. Something is not nothing. Something is not no thing. Something is something. Something is whatever, whatever have you done? So said my mommy. My mommy said, what have you done now? Que cosa has hecho ahora? Us is not has, even though spelled the same. Oh, the spell of words, oh, in English, has an H. Oh, in Spanish, has not. Ahora has an H in it, though we don't say it like in English. It's not ahora. That sounds a little dirty, a little like an Israeli, or is it a Jewish dance? Oh, is it? Oh, it is. Oh, it's so, it's so, it, it, is, it, or. Thank you. Lydia, that was great. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. All right, next up, we're going to hear from Michael Folds. Let me find you in the list here. Michael, are you unmuted? Can you hear me now? We can. All right. This is uh, a poem I've been playing around with for a couple of days. It's uh, called Spinning in Four Parts. Part one. Like a wilting leaf in an angry wind, I flag and float, go awry, land. A thread of inspiration sows its seam between imagination and that other place an author knows from nothing. Two, the volumes of one's recompense, prayers in ink that flow like blood through finger pens. Three, leather bonds of black and white measured pain and silence, mixed delights and distance itself a prison wall the torture of perfection hung on a too high branch. Four, Cecropia spring, uh, spins round a flickering moon, a lure to powdered eyes. She stares at heat she cannot feel, cocoon so far foregone. Thank you. Very cool, Michael, thank you. <clears throat> All right, let's hear from Patricia Carragon. Good to see you, Patricia. Hi. One poem. I put a spell on you, inspired by Nina Simone. Red and gold leaves crushed under my boots. On my iPhone, Nina Simone sang, I put a spell on you. Halloween was in the air, and during the full moon, witchy thoughts would take flight. The law of attraction needed assistance. Red candles anointed with rose oil, synonym, rosemary and poppy seeds, worked up a heated spell, invoked what lived under lock and key. I made a vow to love and honor, asked the goddess to send you my way. You did come and I was first in line, but someone else walked ahead of me. Love wrapped me in a blindfold, kept me in denial for a week. I confronted you and her, but the goddess favored her over me. My feelings became waxen tears and ash. Red and gold leaves crushed under my boots. On my iPhone, Nina Simone sang, I put a spell on you. November's fierce wind persisted. Emotions became icicle tears on the lock and key. Invoked the approaching December storm to cover a graveyard of dried leaves. Thank you. Thank you. That was very cool. Okay, next we're going to hear from Donald Wellman. Thanks for coming, Don. Unmute and I had asked to unmute. Do you see it? There we go. Can you hear me? We can. 
Okay, I'm going to read a poem uh, called Muscle Memory. It's inspired by the life of Tanquil Leclerc, who was a 14-year-old ballerina partnered by Balanchine and who suffered from polio and was never able to dance again after her 15th year, although she did teach dance. Other sort of liberation artists are mentioned. I'll explain only one. His name is Leon Ferrari. He's an Argentine uh, sculpture poet who lashed a figure of Jesus Christ to a body of an F-14 flying over Vietnam, <laughs> I assume. So here's the poem. Muscle memory. Seed about to explode. Her face offering pomegranates, always 14, awash with Cordova's honey gold, patina of relentless sun. Polio struck and the iron lung heaved and sucked its eternal sigh. Puppies attacked my tits, feeding on syrup from my loins. I sorrow for your grief, my daughter. I am the scary monkey with toothless grin, shooting at drones with my wooden gun. Footage from Waziristan, Sigmar Polke. Tani's talent shaped her beauty. Silence yours, bent like an automaton to create a ballet of pure form. She suffered from his rage to eat the whole world up. To whom confide such sorrow? Unspeakable private contamination pollutes the civic word into her world view determined as it may have been by the Mayan long count, rode the sacred twins, pornographers, and shamans who caused airplanes to fall from the Alaskan sky. Over Vietnam, so many Christs were unleashed by American fighters in the name of morality. Leslie Silco, Leon Ferrare, and Sigmar Polke have guided this text. My art and my sickness conjoined flair, sincerity, macabre, and surreal will not trump rape or cowardice. My desire has been to peel the skin off my face to reveal the engines of lust and despair to cauterize your wounds, my daughter. Thank you. Thank you. Very cool. All right, we've got one more reader tonight, a newcomer, Julian Johnson. Hi, um, I'd like to say thank you for everyone who read and thank you for um, letting me share um, one poem. And this poem is um, based in the Central Valley and Alaska. It's a little bit of both. Um, so I'll go ahead and read it. Um, say we were there almost, but never. Toe the line, off in the distance, there is a plastic circus. The darkness of it all, good luck. There is a note we were, we left saying we were never there. How did cherries burn like this? They taste like little mistakes, casts of themselves in stale hot air, the San Joaquin Valley air. No regrets, the walls are black when you come in. The walls are black when you leave. 
And I'd like to thank my professor, Dara Weyer, for um, inviting me to come do a reading. Um, and I'm glad that I got to read with you. <laughs> thank you, Dara and Julie, certainly fantastic. And thank, thank, thank all these fantastic readers tonight, including Johannes Jorensen, Timothy Liu, Anthony Madrid, and Dara Weir. And of course, all our open micers, thank you so much. It's been more than a pleasure. Um, and let's, let's not forget, the only two things we need in the world are poetry and love. That's it. That's all we need. Feel it, breathe it, believe it. Good night, folks. Thanks so much. Wonderful. Thank you.